Hello AP students, this is Mrs. Politsky and I have your notes for chapter 6, learning part 11, the brain and learning. So the brain's mechanism in learning and on a neurological level, learning apparently involves uh, physical changes that strengthen the synapse in a group of nerve cells. And this process is called long-term potentiation. And long-term potentiation is a biological process involving physical changes in the strength of synapse and groups of nerve cells, which is believed to be the neural basis of learning. In operant conditioning, the brain's reward circuitry also comes into play, especially parts of the limbic system and associated brain structures. Uh, Eric uh, Kandel and Robert Hawking's in 1992, um, they basically put a theory uh, to rest on the discovery of animals with relatively simple nervous systems um, have a single type of behavioral response. In more complex brains of mammals, however, neuroscientists have found uh, a second type of learning circuitry that apparently facilitates between higher forms of learning, such as memories for events. The simpler circuitry seems to be responsible for a sort of mindless learning that occurs when a drug dog drools at the sound of a bell or as riding uh, a bike or swinging a golf club. Higher cognitive learning. Uh, this is abstract ideas that involve building it, mental images, simulating concepts, and pondering ways that they can be related or compared or contrast. And it's not that behavioral conditioning isn't involved in human learning, but the principles of behavioral learning don't tell the whole story of the higher cognitive learning. So in cognition, we must make uh, inferences about the processes that we cannot measure directly. And cognitive learning is always about the process that are one step removed from observable learning. And hence, we're gonna to have to talk more about cognitive learning. Thank you very much.